Uh, Fred Seebeck. Tell me about your car. Uh, it's a 1979 930 Porsche. Uh, it's an original original 930 or, or uh, um, also known as the 911 Turbo. 930 is the uh, internal number code that Porsche used for their project number so the car got a nickname the 930. Uh, like I said 1979. The car uh, it started out as a 3.3 liter uh, intercooled turbo. Uh, I've owned it since uh, 15 years now. I've had it, uh, and after about three rebuilds from doing track days with the car, I had to rebuild the engine three times. I finally really modified the car. It's a 3.4 liter now. Uh, I'll, I'll show you around the car. Yep. It uh, uh, went from a 3.3 to a 3.4. The uh, pistons I enlarged about one millimeter, so they they go from 97 millimeter to 98 millimeter, uh, which is a perfect time to do that is when you're doing an engine build right. rebuild, right? You might as well make the thing bigger at that at that point. Uh, pretty much nothing is stock in the car anymore. The um, the intercooler, uh, which is this piece, uh, all its function is just to cool the intake air that goes into the engine. Because whenever you compress air, you heat it up. Uh, so the turbocharger, which is right down here, it's a single turbo motor, uh, which is just like what they were back in the day. Uh, so intercooler is three times as large. The uh, it, the turbo's larger. Turbo's too, larger, right? and the turbo is more modern. The turbo is a ball bearing turbo, which. They use ball bearings to support the shafts. The original turbocharger used journal bearings, which is like a normal bearing you see in an engine. Uh, uh, the ball bearing turbos, they spool a lot faster, which means that the boost uh, comes in a lot earlier uh, and they're more responsive. It's this less inertia to try to speed up and slow things down. Um, plus it's a more modern turbo. So overall, uh, I went from probably 247 horsepower at the wheels to 390. Uh, horsepower at the wheels, which is uh, a lot. Big jumper, <laughs> it's a yeah. big jump. It's almost 150 horsepower increase. Um, it's original four-speed car. So back in the day in 1979, they only used a four-speed transmission. Uh, the car really could use a five-speed. It would accelerate a lot harder if you had more gears. Uh, and keep that in mind when most cars nowadays have six or seven speeds, right? So four-speed box is kind of ancient. Uh, the gears are really tall in the car. Uh, first gear, it'll do 50 miles an hour. Second gear at 7,000 RPM redline, it'll do 85. Uh, so theoretically, I could drive on the highway at, in second gear in this car. Uh, third gear will do 118, 120, and fourth gear is geared to do 165 miles an hour. And you said you changed those gears? I changed gears. I changed uh, yeah, third and fourth. I left first and second gear stock uh, because the car has more than enough torque and power that I didn't need to change first and second. Uh, you got to remember too, each gear set is about a thousand dollars. So every time I make a change, it's it's like money yeah. versus is it worth it? Yeah. So first and second I left stock, but third gear I lowered and fourth gear I really lowered. Um, so the gearing now is, is more tight. Uh, aerodynamically, the car is terrible. Uh, I think I was telling you before, yeah. the coefficient of drag, which is what they call the CD value, on this car stock is 0.46, which is like what a Chevy Suburban or Tahoe, like an SUV would be. Mm -hmm. uh, most cars are well under 0.3. Uh, and what that is, that's basically just a, mo a measure of the drag that the car produces in the wind. So the higher that number, the more drag the car has, and obviously the faster you go, the car is going to mm -hmm. need more horsepower to go faster. Right? Which is surprising how aerodynamic these cars look. Yes. Yeah, the car, uh, the cars were, I mean, you've got to remember, 1979, uh, this when these this car was actually designed in 1963. Right. It was when the first shape was uh, um, put down on paper, I guess, right. for Porsche. And uh, so, so it still is an aerodynamic car, but uh, with the with the, the windshield on this car is, is very vertical compared to modern cars, which contributes to that drag. Right. The headlights are almost vertical, which right. makes more drag. Uh, even little things like the the rain gutters right, right. Uh, that produces drag. So yeah, all of that stuff at speed uh, get, makes the car very draggy. And you can feel it. The car cars are super quick to about 120 miles an hour, and then it starts to 
really impact. Uh, and around 150, the car is, is it, the wind is really holding it back. I mean, you can feel that the car doesn't accelerate like as hard as it, as it normally would. Um, it will do 165 with the power that I have with that gearing, so I, I will be able to redline in fourth. But with the stock gears, uh, it was geared in fourth to go 195. There's no way the car would do that. Oh, uh, and now the reason they did that with those tool gears is, is this car was built to homologate uh, Porsche's racing program, and they were they were building a car called the 934 mm -hmm. and the 935. The 935 was like the ultimate version of this car. Uh, that car had 800 horsepower uh, in the same body, basically. It had all aerodynamic stuff added to it. Mm -hmm. So they were using the same transmission. Porsche always used uh, their race their um, racing equipment was made to go into the street cars yeah. so there really wasn't that much difference between the transmission in this car and in the race car it was probably the same transmission really uh so and that car would do 195 with 800 horsepower right so if they just left the gearing alone they never changed it right. um, and you said that you're using the factory brakes on it which is yes factory on. brakes uh, i don't know if you can see them through the wheels but um this car have have what they call uh it's four piston calipers so there's two pistons on either side they're mm -hmm. all aluminum uh, you can see there's actually some fins, which are cooling fins for the brakes, mm -hmm. to, to let them cool. Uh, and this is 1979 technology, this is what was in the car. Uh, and it even has a floating rotor, which the, the rotor is uh, uh, not rigidly fixed to the rest of the hub part of the brake. The, the rotor itself actually moves. Mm -hmm. It's held in by pins, which keep it from spinning. Which is still spinning. pretty modern. Which is, that's very modern. I mean, uh, only really high-end race cars do that, and all motorcycles have what they call floating rotors. But 1979, that was unheard of. Uh, and this car came from the factory like that. The only thing I do is I put racing brake pads in because it's, it's critical to change. You gotta put into a more racing pad. But other than that, all I do is I get some cooling air to go to the uh, brakes to cool them off and stock rotors, stock calipers. Uh, these actual, these brakes and calipers for this car were actually off of the 917 race car, yeah. which was their Le Mans winning car. Uh, yeah. They actually took the same calipers and the same rotors and everything and, and used it uh, on this car because it was such low production. Uh, in 1979, I think the production on these was like 650 cars. That's it? That's it. Yeah, I mean, GM makes a, that many cars in like a week. Yeah. And th and that's why the numbers are worth that's, that's why That's why the numbers on this car are so valuable because they, they only made 650 in a whole year, right? right. Um, Tell me about your interior, you were yeah, saying uh, pretty inter much stock. The yeah, interior is, is more or less stock because it's still a street car, it's still street legal. I mean, I use it on weekends to go to cars and coffees. Uh, most of the driving I do on the street, though, is to and from the track. Right. <laughs> which which is, I, yeah, I don't... Yeah. Which I was surprised, because you said that you actually were at New Jersey Motorsports Park. Yes. That you drove it here. Oh, yeah, I drove it here people morning. still have a tow vehicle. Yeah, like he, he trailers his... I do have a trailer for it. Um, which I just got about a year ago. I've only owned a trailer for this car the last year or maybe two years uh, And I've been doing track days for uh, I don't know 20 years now so for 18 of those 20 years I drove the car to and from the track. I actually have a little hitch it's, I took it off, but I have a trailer hitch that I made for the for car this, for, street, for the track tires for the track tires And I have a little four by four track uh, some people might have one like a little four foot yeah. by four foot trailer with tires and I used to tow my trailer uh, behind the car, right, to and right, from right. the track, and I would go all over that way. So what do you have on here? Street tires? I, it, these are actually my street tires right now. Um, it's uh, R, Toyo R888Rs. They're kind of a... Uh, they're very barely street legal, because there's very little tread on them, yes. and in the rain they're not the greatest. Yeah. Uh, but they are street legal tires. The reason I, um, I run these and not like a more sedate street tire normally is uh, they're 16 inch rims, and the tires nowadays, it's very, very hard to get... Uh, any tires in 16 inch and this car has a two, 245 rear tire there's only one tire made in 245 16 and that's the toyo r triple eight r and that's why I, I get that because i need at least otherwise i'd be stuck with a 225 or even smaller rear tire and i'm got to remember i'm putting 390 horsepower through a through a 245 which is like a miata sized tire right ridiculous yeah the front tires are 225s in this car um, but in 1979, that was a big tire. Yeah. A 16 inch rim in, in those days was, 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 a, was the cutting edge, right? <laughs> now we have 20s, stuff like that. But going back to the interior, it's all, um, these, these cars are beautiful back in the day. It's all, it's all leather, electric windows. Um, the dash is all leather covered. Uh, that's the, the, the classic Porsche 911 layout with the tachometer right in the center. Um, because that's really your most important gauge, right? Speedo 
who cares? Because your goal in a racetrack is to go as fast as you can, so who cares how fast you're going? Yeah. So the speedo is actually uh, the next gauge over to the right. So the tack is the gauge that's right in front of your face. Mm -hmm. um, I've actually rotated them. I don't know if you've noticed that they're all... Uh, I rotated the tack. Uh, it's, a, it's twisted. It's, it's twisted counterclockwise. So basically the idea behind that is um, when you're getting close to red line, uh, your peripheral, you can actually see it through your peripheral vision because you're focused on the track, so right. you don't have time to focus on so the gauges. Right, so, the... right, when the, when the needle is vertical, I, I know I have till about 1 o'clock before I'm at red line. Right. And that's the idea behind that. That's the only reason I do it. No rev limiters or anything? Uh, these... There is a rev limiter with the computer that I added. Ah, it's, okay. it's, it's limited at 7,000. Gotcha. Uh, the stock car, I think, was limited to 6,800. Uh, but I've, I've converted it to all modern fuel injection. This car back in the day had no computer. I mean, zero, no computer at all. Doesn't even have ABS. There's no ABS in the car, so there's absolutely no uh, aids whatsoever. Basically, your traction control is, is my right foot and, and ABS too, right, no ABS. Uh, it doesn't even have power steering. The car doesn't have power steering. So it's a real beast, like at low speeds. And, and, uh, rack and pinion now, right? It's rack and pinion, so but there's no power assist. So it's super, super heavy, but that's what makes these cars uh, yeah, yeah. unbelievable yeah. with the feel. Yeah. Everybody talks about the 911 steering, yeah. and it's true because you can, it's just, you feel everything with the car. And uh, it's to the point, like, when the car is at the limit of handling, the front end gets light, you actually start to feel the steering getting, going, it gets very, very loose. Yeah. It goes away, and that's when you know you're at the limit of the tires. It's, it's an unbelievable car to drive. Uh, Speaking of driving, yes, yeah. people give you a lot of crap for driving in an original 930? Uh, I get a track. lot of, yeah, a lot of people, uh, they, they're just amazed, right? They uh, they, they think I'm crazy, or uh, they always say, do you know how much that car is worth yeah. when they come over to see me? And um, I said, yeah, I know what it's worth. But that's the reason I bought the car. I, I bought this car because I've always loved 911s ever since high school. I always wanted a 911 Turbo. And, uh, and eventually I got one, I was lucky enough to get one. And um, I, 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 I track it, you know, that's what I bought it for. And that's what these cars are made for. These cars um, were a dry sump engine uh, right from the factory. And now dry sump means there's no, uh, oil's not kept in the block, the, right. it's a separate tank, which is, that's basically what race cars do. Right. Uh, Porsche designed this car, all of these cars, this car here, all of the 911s, the air-cooled cars were dry sump. Uh, so it's phenomenal, it's, it's basically a race motor for the track. And that's, that's what I do with it, and you know, and it crosses my mind every now and then, you know, when I'm out there, especially when I'm out with other guys, guys yeah. that I don't know, like, I don't really know any of these guys here. Right. So you get a little bit of nervous until you get a couple of sessions in, you start to yeah. know who's who, and yeah. uh, you stay away from, stay, who to stay away from, yeah. and you know, and, uh, you know, I think most people know the car, so they give me a little bit of respect, they, maybe not as aggressive with me, which is a good thing, you know, but, I um, know the value as well. Exactly, right, right, but unfortunately at a track, it's a gentleman's agreement, right? Like if, if, if you, if somebody hits you or something happens, it's basically on you to fix the car. And nobody's really obligated to, uh, to uh, pay your bill, right? If they, if they wreck you. So, you know, there's always that risk, but uh, I tend not to think about it. I just yeah. put it out of my mind. Yeah, let's not talk about it anymore. Yeah, <laughs> so, but um, yeah, these cars are phenomenal to drive. It's a rear engine. Uh, so this car's nickname is called the Widowmaker. This, this car was fuel called the, tank in the front. Well, it, the fuel tank's in the front, but the engine's in the back, over behind the rear wheels. So uh, it's about 64% of the engine of the uh, car's weight is over the rear wheels, over the rear tires. Normal cars with a front engine, it's reversed. Normal cars, like 65% of the weight is over the front wheels, 35% is over the back. On this car, it's 65 over the back. Uh, so there's really not a lot of weight on the front. So you'd kind of drive these cars different. Um, uh, these cars tend to understeer, which is the front end plows mm -hmm. at low speeds. Uh, but these cars have a tremendous grip, like coming out of a corner. I may go into a corner a little bit slower than a normal car, but I can get onto the gas super hard and put all that engine weight over the, over the rear wheels. It has phenomenal traction. It just grips. And I can come out of a corner like nobody's business, like the car explodes out of a corner. And I could just give it a lot of gas and not worry about, uh, like, you know, like a Mustang or something. You see the rear tires will light up. And the guy will spin. Yeah, but these cars, you have all that grip with the engine weight. So, so if you know how to drive these cars right, it's, you can turn that uh, disadvantage into a tremendous advantage. Uh, but you have to drive these cars different. You know, like if the car, if the car starts to spin, your, your instinct is to come off and hit the brakes. You'll, you'll make the spin way worse in the 911, these old cars like that. Uh, the way you stop this car from spinning, Give it more. The way you, if you start to feel the rear end of this car start to slide, you give it more gas. 
give it more gas yeah. and the car will hook up. Yeah, the car, you'll start to, you'll start to slide by giving it more gas. That, that's got to be tough to break a habit of. It is, because you, you, you got you know. you to fight what your brain is telling you. So uh, it's basically just something you got to train yourself to do. It, it, uh, it's, it's very, very close to so driving a go-kart. Like, if you can drive a go-kart really well, where you get used to the car yeah. sliding, and then you give it more gas, because it's the same thing. On a go-kart, the engine's in the back, right? right? It's right over the rear wheel. So, um, And what you're doing there is you're transferring weight when you do that. That guy was photobombing us, I think, right? <laughs> but uh, what, what you do is you're transferring weight over to the tires that don't have grip, and that's how you gain grip on the cars. Is, is, is in order to gain grip on tires, you have to put more load on them, more force on them, and the only way to do that is to, is to transfer the weight. Um, so, yeah, phenomenal yeah. car. It's, it's unbelievable. You know? well, thank you for your time. I just, thank you. Just yeah. driving by and absolutely love these cars.